your eyes on these homemade dishes and chocolatey desserts, all made with ramen noodles. Really? Ramen noodles? Yes, ramen. This is Kathy Mitchell. Hi, Kathy Mitchell here with my new cookbook, Everyday Stone Wave Meals. I love this. A famed infomercial star, she has appeared in over 40 commercials, had her face on dozens of products, and is an as-seen-on-TV icon. Some of her most well-known products include her red copper pans and dump dinners, a cookbook just full of dumps. However, one of her most notorious products vanished from the world without a trace, leaving behind a trail of intrigue and curiosity. Today, I am going to be telling you the story of the cookbook that is nowhere to be found in my journey on trying to find it. Now for a little bit of backstory, throughout my life, one of my favorite YouTube videos of all time was the infomercial for Ramen Joy. Ramen Joy is a cookbook released in 2014 that uses ramen in unique and creative ways. This infomercial captivated me, the way Kathy shows the book grabbed my attention every time. The silly wackiness of this commercial honestly was the highlight of my day anytime I saw it. Never in my life did I think I would ever see someone make a pizza with ramen as the crust, and honestly I don't know how I feel about it, but nonetheless, I feel fell in love with the infomercial, and this past summer, I decided that I finally wanted to get my hands on a copy of Ramen Joy. I began my hunt in late July, visiting tons of different thrift stores, bookstores, and basically anywhere and everywhere to try and find Ramen Joy. I went store after store after store, trying to find this book, and I was even able to find other Kathy Mitchell products. Oh, wait. This search lasted for a few weeks, and in all honesty, that's what this video was originally supposed to be. Just me jokingly searching for this weird cookbook. But unbeknownst to me, it was impossible. In August, I began to lose hope. I was having no luck, and it seemed just too obscure to just find at a Goodwill. So I decided to do something that I didn't really want to do, and I turned to the internet. However, there was nothing. Nothing on Amazon, nothing on eBay, nothing anywhere. Ramen Joy was nowhere to be found. Now immediately what popped into my head was, okay, maybe it's just not sold anymore. That happens to products all the time, specifically with things like video games and food products. They can vanish after release. So my next step was just to verify the history of the book, and I figured what better way to do that than go to the website. And immediately upon going to the website, it turned into a virus. So I figured, hey, why not check the Wayback Machine, an archive of millions of websites throughout time. And oddly enough, there were no search results for 2014. However, 2015 had some results, so I clicked on the date and I was redirected to Bulbhead.com, the publishers of Ramen Joy. And reluctantly, there was nothing related to Ramen Joy on the website. So far, there were zero signs of this book anywhere besides the infomercial. And as far as I was concerned, I was at a dead end. But I wasn't going to give up. When I was looking on Amazon for the book, something caught my eye, and that was Ramen Noodle Recipes, a cookbook published by Publications International. You see, the thing with this book is that it looked a lot like Ramen Joy. Wanting to find out more, I decided to order the book and see just how similar they really were. While I was waiting, however, I decided to investigate Kathy's career a little bit more and just get a scope for how many products she really has. And trust me, she has a lot of products. Hi, Kathy Mitchell here. Kathy Mitchell here. Kathy Mitchell here. Kathy Mitchell. Kathy Mitchell. HSN star, Kathy Mitchell. <laughs> The infomercial queen. And now, number one, best-selling author Kathy Mitchell. Dump dinners, dump cakes, pumpkin paradise, baking with refrigerated dough, dump soups, dump diet, micro crisp, crispy wave, the snack master, red copper pan, red copper I love bacon pan, red copper express, red copper big time pan, red copper egg chef, GC express 101, express ready set go, eat this book, sideshow skillet, dojini, and tons more products that I haven't even mentioned. It became aware to me at this time that Kathy wasn't just the face behind ramen joy. Kathy was a star. Seeing a lot of her old infomercials instantly gave me waves of nostalgia toward as seen on TV products as a whole, and I wanted to get my hands on as many Kathy Mitchell products as possible. I got Dump Dinners, Dump Cakes, Dump for Diabetics, the Micro Crisp Cooking Guide, I got the Express Ready Set Go, that's it! I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, I looked everywhere for many of her products, but just like Ramen Joy, the majority of them were nowhere to be found. Eat this book, gone. Pumpkin paradise, gone. Dump diets, gone. Almost all of this woman's products seemingly vanished from existence, just like Ramen Joy. It seemed like I was coming across a Kathy Mitchell lost media empire, and just before I could really get to the bottom of everything, a package arrived. 
we got it. So this is the uh, book that's on Amazon that looks an awful lot like Ramen Joy. The title is almost the same, the same picture setup. It almost looks the exact same. Remember, in the video, she brings up ramen, ramen shrimp. shrimp, ramen, ramen tacos. tacos. Both of those are on the cover. I don't know if that's the, the barbecue, barbecue beef, beef pasta. pasta. I doubt it, but it looks very similar. So if I'm remembering it correctly, the numbering is very similar to Ramen Joy. Wow, this thing really is in full color. Wait a second. That's the exact same photo that's used in the Ramen Joy infomercial. This book was basically the same. Same recipes, same pictures. This thing was nearly identical. Now I was even more confused. Ramen Joy itself is gone, yet this book that's basically the exact same is available to purchase right on Amazon. Wanting to get more answers, I did what I had to do, and I contacted Publications International hoping for a response. And to my delight, they responded. Obviously, this was not the email I was hoping for. I wanted some actual answers, and when I asked if they had any contact information for either Kathy or Telebrands, I was told a big resounding no. After this, I was even more intrigued. Publications International essentially just dodged me, and without wanting to give up, I decided that my next best course of action would be to contact Telebrands themselves in search of some answers. Oh, and for the record, Telebrands is Bulbhead. They kind of switch the names every once in a while, but they're the same company. However, when I contacted Telebrands, all I was met with was essentially, check out our website. In all honesty, this was pretty demotivating. My two biggest lines of contact gave me zero answers. And even if I listened to Publications International and contacted Kathy Mitchell, how exactly would I do that? I have no contact with Kathy. I have never met this woman. Hell, because of how little information about her there is on the internet, there's basically a 0% chance of ever speaking to her. Or is there? Bring in the Kathy Mitchell Fan Club, a Facebook group full of Kathy fans just like myself. And in it, I found loads of people who had some of the same questions as me. And I also found Kathy Mitchell. Kathy herself was in the fan club. She had posted before, responded to people. Hell, she was even an admin in the group. This was a potential direct line of contact right to Kathy. So I decided to shoot my shot by sending her a long paragraph explaining who I was and what I was doing and I waited. In the meantime, however, to see if anyone had any more answers, I made a post to the fan club about me trying to find this book. And once again, we played the waiting game. However, after a few weeks, I had yet to get a response from Kathy herself, and my post essentially just left me in the same boat as I was in beforehand. It was around this time that I realized that contacting Kathy directly will not be successful. And once again, I began to lose hope. But all of a sudden, an alternative route popped up. Bring in John. Kathy's son-in-law. Watch this. Brown some beef or any other meat with a ramen seasoning pack. Double ramen. Good size square to catch it. Now you can call me crazy for this, but when I found John, I saw an opportunity. One that could potentially get me to Kathy herself. So I decided to pull a risky move and I sent him a message, asking if there was any information he could give me. And following this, I figured it would be a while till I would hear from him. As a random teen, contacting you about your mother-in-law is a very weird concept we were in. This was genuinely such good news. I finally had an in. I had someone who could get me into direct contact with Kathy herself, and to say that I was happy would be an understatement. This was in mid-August, and I was hoping to get my hands on the book by the latest September. But then September went by without a word from John, and the next time I would hear from him would be October, which was essentially just a, hey, I'm still trying type of thing. But then November went by, then December, then January. And by this point, I was losing more hope than ever. Here I was thinking that I was about to finish the story, and I was ghosted. To say that this was demotivating would be an understatement. This genuinely took my motivation and brought it to a near zero. And I hate to admit it, but I was about ready to give up altogether. But I figured I would take one last shot to try to talk to Kathy herself. So once again, I searched up Kathy's Facebook account and I sent her a message. And to my surprise, I got a response. Absolutely. Just like that. Look at this. There's a no fuss dinner just like that. Looks like you worked wow. all day. 
baked for about 15 minutes, really easy, really fast. It was 3.53 in the morning on February 10th and I was sleeping over at a friend's house when I checked my phone randomly and saw this. A message from Kathy that began with, hello, how are you doing? With it being 3.53 in the morning, I was very tired. However, this message got me really excited. I sent back two quick messages at 4.15 and I went to bed looking forward to the future. However, when I woke up the next morning, reality started to set in. Why would Kathy Mitchell be texting me at 3.53 in the morning? Why would her message not have anything to do with what I said at all? And most importantly, why is it from a different account? And then I realized, I messaged a different account. In fact, I messaged a bot. Right when I thought I had Ramen Joy secured, it felt like everything was ripped away and launched into outer space. And I'm gonna be honest, I was gonna call it quits. Between not hearing back from John and having to deal with the fake Kathy account, I thought it was over. But just to make sure, I sent John one last message. And unfortunately, I never heard back. I wish I could tell you guys that there was a happy ending. In all honesty, this is not how I wanted the video to turn out. I was hoping to get my hands on a copy of Ramen Joy, or at the very least, interview Kathy about the book and just her life in general. It honestly sucks that it ends here, however, I'm remaining optimistic. Maybe this video will get enough eyes on it that Kathy will see it and reach out to me. But until then, we're kind of at a dead end. Okay, so, round two. It's March 18th, and I kid you not, I'm on my computer getting ready to write the script for my Ramen Joy video, when all of a sudden, I get a notification from none other than John, coming back into the story after I thought he was gone from it forever. Now, normally in these situations, I was pretty used to waiting a while for the next step. However, only a few short hours later, John messaged me once again with Kathy's email, and before I knew it, I was emailing the one and only Kathy Mitchell. And by the end of the night, Kathy Mitchell had agreed to do an interview. I honestly find it pretty hilarious that everything I had been waiting months for came to me within a two hour window. And to say that I was excited would be once again an understatement. However, in the email where she agreed to do an interview, I was given some news that I had been hoping to get for a long time now. Some news that would change the story completely. I've received the truth behind Ramen Joy. Quote, in the meantime, the reason nobody can find a copy of Ramen Joy is because it does not exist. Ramen Joy was never printed. This book that I had spent months trying to find simply just wasn't real. They tested it, nobody bought it, and ultimately, Ramen Joy became abandoned. Hearing this was shocking, but in a way, it kind of makes sense. However, I still had many questions about the book and about Kathy herself. I mean, if Ramen Joy was never printed, then what's the story behind ramen noodle recipes? Or like the 50 other products she has that are nowhere to be found. But before I knew it, it was March 29th, and I was going to interview the one and only infomercial star, Kathy Mitchell. Hello! Well, hello! Hi! How's it going? It's going okay. It's funny you got me so interested in, in the the cookbooks and stuff. I was watching on on YouTube and mm -hmm. looking at some of my commercials, and I found people that were reviewing my products and stuff, and it was really strange. <laughs> <laughs> Before we start, I did look on online, and this is the cookbook that they the company that made okay you've got yeah that's exactly the cook you know telebrands first of all is an infomercial company mm -hmm. and they are not a book publisher mm -hmm. so you know when when they need a book published or or printed I, I guess they were working with publications international and they were and publications international printed the books if the commercial worked. I believe they probably printed the dub cakes and the dub dinners. It, in this case, it was easier to 
find a book that was already written and I could either add some recipes to it or I could, you know, cook some of the ones that were in the book and, and put my name on it. And I'm, you know, it sounds like cheating, but uh, I can't write 300 cookbooks, 300 cook mm -hmm. in, in recipes for one cookbook. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, in a lot of cases, like with dump, uh, I think it might have been dump cakes. Um, I had I had input in a lot of the recipes, but I did not write the whole cookbook. That's why when you buy dump cakes, you'll find some recipes in there that aren't even dump cakes. Right. So right. one of the things that I originally thought was, is Kathy a scam artist? <laughs> like, <laughs> is yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> um... No, I'm not a scam artist. Yeah. But you know, like I said, I you know I I uh, I'm trying to think of of a something that would be similar to, to the situation here, but nothing's coming to mind right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's, a cookbook is like a product. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a pan or a microwave pasta cooker or anything else, you know. I, they send them to me, I try them. In a lot of cases of, of products, if I don't like it, uh, there's no way I will try to sell it. I'll tell you what, I, I, I was very careful with infomercials and I've been making infomercials for 32 years. And the one of the, one thing that I always said was I would, I would not lie, I would not fake, I would not do something that people couldn't do themselves at home. It was dump cakes, dump uh, dinners, dump diabetics, mm -hmm. dump soup. You've got them all. There's one other show you've been on that really intrigued me to ask you about the tim okay. and eric awesome show on oh, adult yes. swim with john c <laughs> Riley. your I love that. that is one of the funniest videos i've ever seen wow this is this is crazy this is something that a month ago i was thinking oh this is never gonna happen and now look where we are and we're bad friends dude. yeah we're 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 the closest <laughs> you know Right. That's right. And if you ever come to California, you can come and see me. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> me and Kathy spoke for over an hour about various things, ranging from life to her career. If you guys want to see the full interview get posted, let me know and I might be able to work something out. But this conversation with Kathy was genuinely a dream come true. The fact that she agreed to speak with me was crazy in itself, but to the level that she did was admiring in a way. Kathy was honestly one of the nicest people I have ever had the pleasure of speaking with, and this whole journey in itself has taught me a lot. It's taught me to keep chasing what I want, to not give up, because you never know when you're going to win. Despite the book not existing and therefore me not being able to get a copy, I'm oddly not upset over it. I feel like over time it became less of trying to get the book and more of trying to get to Kathy herself. So I'm honestly considering this whole experience a win. All right, thanks, Connor. Of course. Have a great night, Kathy. You too. Bye. Bye.